The next physical quantity in relation to motion that we will define is the average velocity. It is a characteristic of the motion that addresses issues such as when the longer route using the highway takes as much time as a shorter route through the city. We will first define it and then investigate what it means. The average velocity label VAVG is a physical quantity evaluated as the ratio of the displacement and the change of time over a particular time interval. This definition can be summarized with this mathematical expression. And if you recall the definition of the delta, we can also write it this way. The average velocity is a vector because the expression can also be viewed as the product of the scalar 1 over delta t with the vector displacement. Since the scalar 1 over delta t is always positive because the final time is always larger than the initial time, the average velocity is in the same direction as the displacement. The measurement unit for the average velocity is the ratio of a distance unit and a time unit, like for example kilometers per hour or meter per second. In order to evaluate an average velocity, we only need the time and locations of the object at the beginning and at the end of a time interval, where the object went during the time interval is not part of the calculation. Take, for example, this trajectory in two dimensions. Let us use the endpoints of this curve as our initial and final locations for a given time interval. Then the displacement for that interval looks like this. Any trajectory that passes through the initial and final locations and for which it took the same amount of time to travel from the initial position to the final position will give the same value for the average velocity. This includes the trajectory where the object travels in a straight line parallel to the vector delta d at a constant rate. If the equation for the definition of the average velocity is written slightly differently, we can see that the average velocity is the displacement per unit time, so that when it is multiplied by how long it took to reach the final position, it gives the displacement. It has to do with how fast and in which direction the object would need to move in order to reach the final position at the final time by following the straight line connecting the initial position to the final position. Let us now look at a one-dimensional case, our good old setup of the straight road between Toronto and Montreal with the reference direction pointing from Toronto to Montreal and with the origin in Toronto. The X component of position versus time graph looks like this, and the same information given with a mathematical expression looks like this. Basically, the relationship here is a line with a slope of 100 kilometers per hour. To evaluate the x component of the average velocity, we need to evaluate the ratio of the x component of the displacement and the change of time over a time interval, which can also be written this way. At this stage, you might recognize that this is the formula for the slope of a line. The line would be the sequence that joins the points ti di to point tf df. Here, since the whole relationship between dx and time is linear, any choice of time interval would lead to the same value for the slope, which is the x component of the average velocity. Let us do a numerical example. Here is a component of position versus time graph where the reference direction was defined as being to the right. We will evaluate the x component of the average velocity over various time intervals. Recall that the x component of the average velocity is evaluated this way. If the time interval is from zero to five seconds, you get from the graph that d dx is 3 meters at t equals 5 seconds and was 0 at t equals 0. Substituting that information gives this 
and the final answer is 0.6 meters per second. It is positive, as it should, since the slope of the line in that interval is positive. Next is the interval 5 to 8 seconds. The component of position is always 3 meters, from 5 to 10 seconds. So it is not surprising that substituting the information leads to an answer of 0. The object, on average, did not move. Finally, for the time interval from 10 to 13 seconds, we get a final answer of minus 2 meters per second. It is negative, as it could have been seen from the graph, because the slope of the line for time above 10 seconds is negative, which means that the object moves towards the left after time t equals to 10 seconds. In everyday language, speed and velocity are often considered to mean the same thing, but not in physics. The average speed labeled SEVG is a physical quantity evaluated as the ratio of the distance traveled and the change of time over a particular time interval. This definition can be summarized with this mathematical expression. The average speed is a positive scalar because this expression is the ratio of two positive scalars. The measurement unit for the average speed is the ratio of a distance unit and a time unit, like, for example, kilometers per hour or meters per second. Since the distance traveled is always greater or equal to the magnitude of the displacement, the average speed is also greater or equal to the magnitude of the average velocity. This example will show the difference between average velocity and average speed. Since we are working with a horizontal path, we will use the typical east and north reference directions. Here is the circular racetrack. The trip itself occurs only along the northern half circle. The displacement vector for this trip has its tail at the easternmost point of the circle and its tip at the westernmost point. It would look like this. The givens are the radius of the circle and the duration of the trip. The average velocity is the ratio of the displacement and the change of time for the trip. If you look at the blue arrow, you can see that the magnitude of the displacement is the diameter of the circle and that the arrow is pointing westward, which is in the opposite direction to x hat. The x component of the displacement is therefore negative. These insights lead to this relationship with the givens. The next step is to substitute the givens and to use a calculator to arrive at the final numerical answer. As for the average speed, the ratio involves the distance travel and the duration. The car follows the half circle, so the distance travel is half the circumference of the circle. Substituting the givens and using the calculator leads to 13.1 meters per second. The final step is to summarize our results. This concludes the lecture about the average velocity and the average speed. We will next look at what happens when the time interval becomes infinitely small. This will be the subject of the next installment.